Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but it means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own project. If you're like me and really enjoy having something on while you work, sometimes the content you like is very visually engaging, and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to, so that's where I come in. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. I believe, at least I hope and I pray, that this is Monday's upload. <laughs> So happy Monday to you! If it is, if it's not, then the the next couple videos I'm going to be filming are going to be really out of whack, but... It is not Monday's upload because I think when I was recording Friday's video, I never hit record. <sighs> so this video is for Friday, and then I will have to film again for the next week, but you'll see me soon. But just so you know, this is this is Friday's video. Disregard anything I talk about re referring to Monday, because Monday's video is now this, uh, or this used to be Monday's video, but now it's going to be Friday's, because Friday's video never was recorded. So we're, we're a little bit weird. It's a little bit back to the future kind of time warp situation, but bear with me. It wouldn't be a Paws and Pearls video if it didn't go wrong in some way, shape, or form, correct? Correct. All right. Just know that I tried. <laughs> um, we are going to continue to work on the sock for my cousin. It is the point where we are shaping the heel flap, or doing the heel flap right now, and I need to have 20... Uh, or not 26, 32 rows of stitches, or rows of knitting, purling and knitting, so that um, I have a full, full gamut there. So let me double check that I actually need to start, let's see, yeah, yeah, exactly what I thought. So I was right. So um, for this particular heel flap, it's a slip one, knit one. So we'll go ahead and start. And I have my trusty stitch counter here at zero so that I will keep track. So I hope you are all having a good day wherever you are. Happy beginning of the week, I guess. I hope I had a good weekend. I'm filming this ahead of time because I had some other stuff planned for the previous weekend, that you see this previous weekend, and knew that if plans do take place, I would be spending my time doing other things, and I would not as likely be able to film. So I tried to knock all of this out on the weekend of the 17th. Well, like, 17th was Saturday, so the 18th of October is when I'm filming this. I was filming my other videos for the end of the week, and then all of a sudden I'm like, hey, you know what? I didn't eat breakfast and I didn't eat lunch so I should really have some food because I was starting to get hungry and previous week's episode talking about full and how I liked full I was thinking about making some hot cocoa and I think the thought of having hot chocolate just kind of amplified my hunger so I had some food had another cup of coffee. I did have coffee when I woke up, so that kind of, I was thinking like I need to have something for breakfast too, but then after my coffee, I wasn't really hungry and decided to start filming, and after a while it really kicked in that I should have had some breakfast after having my coffee. But tonight, this Sunday night, after I finish, filming, I'm going to roast some acorn squash. I've had acorn squash 
prepared from other people before, but I haven't made it myself yet. And I got a delivery from Instacart, and this time the person got everything, um, well, everything that was in stock they got, and the replacements that I asked for were properly supplied. And it turned out that the person who delivered everything had come to my house before, and I the name looked familiar, like after it sunk in a bit, I was like, oh yeah, you have been here before. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, they're, they were good ones. So hopefully if they're still in business, the next time I have to place an order, they will be the one to complete it. I don't know what their schedule is or anything, but they're very, very communicative, very thoughtful, uh, so I like to give that guy a, a good review and boost his tip. Um, I usually do 15% for the deliveries, but if everything goes really, really well, then I change it to give them more. But yeah. So I have this acorn squash, and earlier, this morning when I was having my coffee, I looked up online how to roast it. Cause you know, turn on your oven, whatever, rub some oil on it, salt, pepper, I got that part. But I was like, how long do I roast it? What temperature do I roast it for? So I needed some of those details, so I found a, an article, and now I'll be ready to make dinner after filming Friday's video. Super excited about that. <sighs> it's just nice that full means I can actually turn my oven on again. It's been chilly in here. At least chilly for me. It's uh, I usually keep it at a toasty 74 degrees in my apartment during the fall and winter months, but uh, I guess maybe to my advantage the thermostat hasn't kicked on yet, but it is about 70 or 72 degrees in my apartment or my townhouse currently, and the kitties are feeling it. They've just been living on the couch pretty much the whole weekend cozied up on their favorite blanket and I don't blame them. I have my space heater in here. I haven't turned it on yet because uh, one, I'm charging the battery for my camera and the outlet that's shared with the light box for my lighting situation. So it's two out, two uh, outlets there, so I can't plug anything else in. So after I'm done filming, then I'll be able to take the lamp off and plug in my heater again. And I haven't heard from my, my partner yet. If you guys haven't watched last week's video, I think it was Monday that I was Monday's upload I was talking about, uh, my partner has to do overtime this this day, this Sunday that I'm filming, and they had to be at their job at 9 o'clock in the morning, and they don't know when they get to come home, and they have to put in some more hours later this week, so they have a big project at their job. But the one thing that's nice is they get paid overtime. However, like when I talk to you guys about going in, I am a salaried employee, so I do not get any overtime. Any hours I put in are just me being a nice, good employee, <laughs> going the extra mile. Well, actually, it's not even really that, but a lot of times it's like I'm being forced to go in. Sometimes it's like, um, my job is just so involved that there is no other way for me to get things done instead of, unless I, I go in, so. 
not quite the same. I really like that I am working on this flap with the pretty color that I like. I mean, all the colors in this chroma yarn colorway are really pretty, but I love that teal. If you know me, you know I love that color. So it's really, really nice. But I am excited to get some DK sock, well, DK yarn that will work for socks. A lot of it isn't, okay, so for me, when I've been looking at yarns, I see the blend, like the, the nylon and such and such, or the polyamide and such and such, like natural fiber mix for socks. But when I look for DK, when I look for sport, I don't see that blend, at least for like indie yarns and stuff. So if you um, if you see some, let me know because I I've bought some DK yarn. I have some DK yarn that I'm ready to use for um, socks, mainly the Harry Potter ones that I bought for my my brother's fiance and my friend and myself. Hopefully next year I can do those, but um, I haven't actively bought any other DK weight yarn for socks because I haven't found any that has like that blend with the nylon. So if you guys know of any, let me know. I'm going to try looking at this Etsy shop that I bought from before. It's called Five Yarns, I think. I still have them favorited in my my library, but last year for my birthday I was suggested them as a brand to try out for yarn, and I still have the yarn. It's sock weight though, and haven't used it yet, but I'm excited to when I can. It's really pretty yarn. But I do want some DK or some sport weight so that I can make some socks and knit them up a lot faster than with the standard sock weight. But I don't want them to be like thick like worsted. Just a little bit thicker than a regular sock, but not, you know, not for like slippers or boots, but like a th athletic shoe, kick around shoe. But I also bought some lace weight yarn a while ago, and I want to try to use that for socks as well, just to see what it's like. Because then it's like closer to, closer to the kind of socks you buy at the store. I really like doing the slip knit type of heel. It's just kind of fun to to do every other. Changes it up a little bit. You just got to remember which one you're slipping and which one you're you're knitting. That happened to me when I was doing one of the other socks recently. I can't remember if it was for my cousin or if it was for her daughter, but when I got to the end, I'm like, something's not right here. 
because I counted up and I saw that I had knit had knit twice instead of slipping. You know, I, I feel like I need to pat myself on the back because I have been able to wake up with an alarm. You know, there's been some assistance, but I've been able to get up before noon the past few weekends and haven't taken a nap, which is like, wow. For me, that's that's pretty impressive because I love to nap and I love to sleep in and I also love to stay up really late, but I've been trying my best to, well, okay, a little bit trying. My, my efforts have been toward uh, going to bed by 1 a.m. every day, but I have been staying up later recently because I was working on some work for my job and like the volunteer thingy I was doing. Oh. Oh, where did I? I messed up. Hold on a second. I need to save my stitch. Did I? Did I really like? I think I slipped one by mistake. Okay, maybe I slipped it. This is not the side that I need to be slipping though. I think I might have accidentally slipped that. Anyway, I was um, working on this volunteer thing and that started up so I had to get some stuff ready for that and then Monday I was editing and then um, one of the other days I had to prepare for some other thing. And then it was late, but I hadn't like finished, fully finished my evening of dinking around. So I stayed up late to finish dinking around and then it ended up being late. But, but beyond that, I have been, been doing a pretty good job of not staying up as late, like, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning. That has not happened in a while, so there's that. But I am trying to stick to one because I found that one o'clock is a good time for me where even though it's not the most sleep that I would want, I am still pretty functional with going to bed at one and then waking up at, at least like the weekday waking up at seven, seven fifteen or so. so that's helpful. So it's weird. I have like this, I'm trying to figure out the formula. It's like sometimes if I have a lot of sleep, I feel worse. And then sometimes if I only have a few hours of sleep, I'm like, okay. But if it's really, really short amount of hours, I feel really bad. And then if it's just 
a long time, but not like 12 hours, then somewhere between 9 and 10 hours of sleep, I'm okay. It's, it's just really weird, really weird. <laughs> But let me know, do you feel like you're a person who needs a lot of sleep or just a little bit to function, like peak function, not just like I'm awake but I feel like a zombie, but actually coherent and in relatively okay mood, able to, to problem solve, you don't feel too drowsy. Uh, do you have like a sweet spot of like just the right amount of hours for yourself? Are you like me and my brother and we can sleep for many, 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 many hours? Like if I wake up and I'm groggy, if I woke up because I had too much sleep, then sometimes I just go back to bed to try to like reset whatever it was that messed me up. <laughs> I don't, I can't recall the last time I've had to do that and whether or not it was effective, but it's usually how I feel. It's like, this isn't working. Let me just go back to bed. <laughs> Let me try again. I remember my parents would get so mad at my brother for sleeping in so late. I don't even think he stayed up late. I think he just slept a long time. And then I would st I would still just like curb it where I'd wake up at like 10 or so and then take a nap later. So I'm like, well, even though my parents like want me awake right now, they don't mind that I take a nap. As long as, you know, I don't feel like I need to stay up all night because of the nap. But once we were in our room, it was just like whatever. Like if you didn't sleep, you didn't sleep, but you couldn't you couldn't like have activities as if you were a normal awake person, like you couldn't be watching TV. If it was bedtime, you had to just lie there until you went to sleep or something. I used to be really bad where I would stay up. I would like do my normal stuff. Like I, I had a science down where I really didn't want to do my homework right when I got home from school. So I'd like have my snack, I'd go on the computer, play video games, whatever, you know, do my chores and stuff, hang out. And then right when it was time for bed, I'd go in, in my room and I would, I had a walk-in closet in my house and I'd go in my closet and I'd t put a pillow under the door, close the door, turn on my light and then I would just do all my homework in the closet because <laughs> I'm like I want to do fun stuff during the day when people are around and then I'll do my homework after bedtime and d despite having like no sense of um, discipline in, in creating a schedule for myself I, I was a good student I got really good grades um, so that was nice. I was lucky in that aspect, but I wouldn't recommend it to anybody because the stress of like trying to do stuff, especially because by then I'd uh, all my, um, you know, my friends, my family was asleep. So it wasn't like I could, and this was before cell phones, like I, cell phones existed, but they weren't like smartphones. Like there were some but it was still very early stages of them so I didn't have texts like that I had like 100 texts a month I could share with my family and my friends didn't have phones like that so it wasn't like I could text a friend and be like yo I'm having some trouble I'm working on my homework right now at like midnight 
you want to help me? Or, you know, wake up my parents and be like, oops, forgot I had this project, can you help me? I'm stuck on this problem. So, um, yeah, that happened. I think if I had, I mean, I don't plan on having any children. If I have children, uh, I think H-E double, H -E double hockey sticks would probably freeze over because I'm just not, I'm just not maternal. <laughs> my cats are my children, as crazy cat lady as that sounds. Like, I have no, no desire to bring life into the world. Um... I think if if it came down to it and my ovaries were just like paws and pearls it's now or never we're we're gonna shrivel up you better do something I I might adopt or foster because there are a lot of children in the world that need loving homes and I personally don't want to contribute to people being forced to be in this world suffering so I might as well try to make someone who is already here suffering feel a little better by helping them out. Um, but anyway, my tangent, <laughs> my tangent to talk about children is to say that I wouldn't want to uh, encourage any child to create a lot of bad habits for themselves. But I also wouldn't want to be as restrictive as my parents were with me. They, they were like second time parents. Cause if you guys don't know, my aunt and my uncle uh, had guardianship of my brother and I from a very young age. Um, our parents are deceased and that's how we became uh, in, uh, in the guardianship of my, my relatives. So when I, when I say parents, I'm referring to my aunt and my uncle because since I was nine, they have been my parents, and so I just naturally started calling them my parents based on their parental guidance of my myself. But, um, of course, when I talk to them, I don't call them mom and dad because they are not, and never were they, and never will they ever claim to be. I mean, we still have that familiar familial relationship, but as far as when I'm speaking of a figure who is a mentor and um, a guide they are my parents and they were very very uh, strict with my brother and I because they were young parents when my cousin whose sock I am knitting um, when she was born so they they did all the fun stuff with her and then once they were older they're like ooh we 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 want to we want to raise our um, sister slash sister-in-law's kids you know very well as well as we can because we don't want to you know this is a big big task We've asked to be this responsible figure in their life and want everything to go well so they they really like clamp down on us um when we were younger and older and teenagers and stuff so there was there was never like a not a conflict with some of their thoughts but again i i speak highly of them because it was a lot you know to take in two young kids when you were expecting to be empty nesters and all that so um if i were a parent and i'm not so i am only speaking in theory my battery is almost dead and it looks like I was rambling on about homework and things and the camera had run out of time on the segment of video as well. I was actually just finishing up with you guys anyway so perfect timing um, but we just finished our 10th row. I'm not sure when the camera cut off but essentially I was saying that if I were a parent I would let the child choose 
the schedule that worked best for them and their learning style, but then if things, if their grades start going south, then I would step in to create some more structure for them um, so that I can monitor when they're doing their schoolwork. But for me, I didn't need that monitoring because I already, I already had it like that. Like I was getting good grades. So I just didn't want to do my work right after school. So that was my, that was my thing. So if I was a parent, I would take that into consideration. Like what did I want to do when I was a child and did it work out for me? And maybe we want to try letting the kids do some stuff that they want to do if it works for them because not everybody has the same working style and I don't want to restrict them in that way if it hinders their success. Um, but yeah, so we had 10 rows of heel flap, battery's almost dead, and I was going to just say that's where we are and I will see you Wednesday? Considering that both of my batteries are now dead, this will probably be the last video you see me in this outfit, and I'll try to film some more tomorrow night, which will be Monday night, um, the same night that you see last week's Monday video, so that I have everything ready, because I have a really strong feeling that I won't be able to film this weekend, so I'm going to try to get as much ready for the following week as I can, which is the week you see this, so... Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.